is what we got today. Old Holden Montana. She's fairly complete. I've got my good exploring boots on. Ah, oh, six cylinder. This is a bit of a nest for some animals. We're missing a few bits, but what's going on there? H said. But she's got the commercial front on it. The commercial, it's a Q front. They called them a commercial. But they had the, the basic pressed steel grill and indicators here. And we might have to get rid of the old bumper. This is newer than I thought. It's 79. Seventh month, 79. It's new. We're usually a lot better prepared. But I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to be buying anything today. But I have. It's pretty complete. That'll come in handy. 302 677. Love it. Don't like the smell, but I love the car. Little bit of something going on then. Like a 12 volt outlet or some, something. I don't know what that is. I've just ruined it. Oh well. A little bit of cancer. And I'm told it's a tipper the dip in the tray it used to carry a lot of sand and stuff on it just a little job with me into town yeah look there's a hinge and there's a ram so you just hinge there and just tip little loads of bits and pieces off it like i said i had no intention of buying a car that day so a week later i headed back over with the trailer And I tell you, that was one that I really would have liked to have taken a battery and some fuel and maybe tried to fire it up right where it sat. But that's all good in the YouTube world, but the reality of it is, I'm going to be up at 5.30 in the morning, get my sorry ass to work. And I'm still a good solid two hours away from home and it's getting late in the Arvo. So next thing we'll do, we'll give you a good look around it and we'll rip into it. But I'm saying the morning. Now we're back home and out of the long grass, we can actually take a bit better look at what we're actually starting with. And you can see a fair bit of hard work went on with this old girl. She's a bit beaten and a bit worn. Got a couple of patches in the sill there. Maybe old repairs underneath. I'm not going to, to fiddle with them and find out. A bit of damage, you can kind of picture what's happened here. It's gone straight up there, straight into there. 
don't know, something might have fell on it. Little rust hole there. And we've had a couple of goes at this mirror by the looks of it. She's fell off a few times. Sturdy as. But other than that, drip rails are good. It's not completely rotted out. Tiny little pinhole there. The plumes, eh, don't think it will look there. I'll just ignore that. A bit more damage here and there. There's a few stories to tell in this one. A little bit of rot there. Hmm, I'll ignore that. It's random, a hole halfway up the door. And as I said, it was a tipper. So it's got, what's that like? A, I guess that's to throttle it up. So that'd be rev the motor up, nice safety. And that was probably hoist and drop it down and <laughs> safety lock out. That's pretty cool. Obviously the cable's gone, but. Oh, wheel arches have seen better days. Got a fair bit of crap built up in the chassis there too. We'll get that out. The old tray's got a fair bend in her from carrying loads. I was told I used to run gravel and sand and whatnot from the plant into town. So all of the K's have probably been hard. I'm shocked the tail lights aren't broken, but they're different, so they've been broken at some stage. <laughs> Look at this exhaust. That's awesome. It's like an inch and a half. And again, that wheel arch has seen better days too. I'd say that's where the hydraulic pump was for the tipper. That's where we store the rest of our topsoil. But all in all, cab corners aren't rotted out. Back of the cab's good. What's not good is probably this. And I'd say they did a bit of wobbling around while I was towing it home. I didn't notice that. I bet you everyone behind me when I was towing it did. Oh, that handle stuck up. It's one of that door didn't fling open. There's a spare handle. Oh, not spare, it's just the one I need. Because it's missing. And it smells like a cross between a cattle truck and rodents. Oh, flashlight? Oh, geez, and that's leaking. Awesome. Well, somebody gave us stuff about her. They were putting the flash lube in her. Confidence just grew. And she's a column automatic. Two thousand and six. I wonder if that was its last good job. Two thousand and seven. I'll look up the rego plate and see when it was last registered. And I did actually look that up on Service New South Wales website. 
Sure enough, that Rego plate last time was registered November 2007. What else is in there? Oh, fuse lid. Cigarette lighter. Oh yeah, cigarette lighter's missing. In here. And go back in there. Trim's seen better days. We've had a bit of rain and she's clearly leaking pretty bad because they're plants growing. At least we've got some keys for this one. Other than that, it's pretty complete. And that's why I grabbed it. Sometimes half the battle's won when they're complete. And having to chase parts can sometimes be harder than finding the car itself chasing small obsolete parts but I like the fact this one's still got its air cleaner on it everything's still intact it literally looks like it just drove into that spot and got walked away from actually I wonder did it boil last time it, that's got a mark in it too another hole there that would explain no cap and no water. I guess we're not going to find out what's wrong with it. We stand around talking, so then I'll clean a bit of this out. Chuck a battery in it. Oh god, look at those. Look at that. That one's half melted. But they're intact. We'll throw a battery in, see if we've got dash lights, and we'll start from there. Here's the first thing on my list, a battery clamp. I'll just leave it like that for a second and just see if we start to smell anything amazing. There's plenty going on in that corner there, plenty of flammable. And as I was putting that terminal on you could actually hear it sort of cracking and carrying on so there's something drawing power somewhere. Hopefully it's not under there. Oh, there's a washer bottle under there. Uh, I'll get, I'll get to that, you know, later. Let's have a look inside. I don't see any smoke yet. Let's see if we've got a dash light. Yep. That's oil. Um, I'd be charged, I guess, that one. Lights. Let's see if we got some lights. They're on, but only just. Makes me wonder how good that battery is, because they were really dim. I've actually got a fair bit of confidence in this battery because I know it just come off charge. But I'm going to check anyway. 12.6. So the battery's fine. So they're that dim because those those leads are basically just shit like really shit but we'll worry about that later right now we'll maybe see if I can turn him over just before I go hitting it with the key I'll roll him over maybe pull a plug that worries me oh you can't kill these dead set that's just rolling nice and easy I might mark it and see if I can go a full twice around just to make sure it's not grabbing on anything. I've had a heap of these 202s, they are hard to kill. It's really easy actually, which these things never had a lot of compression from standard, so that doesn't really worry me that much. It grabbed a bit then actually. It's once around. That's really easy actually. You can do it with one hand. To there, that gets a bit tighter. 
you can hear it wanting to build compression. I'll go the way it should be and see what. A little bit of compression there. Not there though. That was really easy. Might have a stuck valve or something. Anyway, it turns over. I think with those bad leads and the voltage drop, those lights were really dim. I might actually knock some plugs out and give it a good chance of winding over as best it can and get some oil pressure, which, oh, it's got a little. It's terribly black, but it's got oil. It doesn't stink of fuel, and it's not over full, so it's a good sign. That does still worry me though. Did it boil? Guess we'll see. That wasn't even on. Oh, that's on. Neither was that one. Oh, easy. Too bad. Bit of oil and crap around there, but the actual electro doesn't look too bad. I'll just chuck some tape around my leads. They're pretty much, I don't know if you can really mess them up because of the, the length of them, but just to make sure I could mess anything up really. It just saves me tossing about later if you happen to get busy. Use a couple. I have no reason to think that that's been messed with, so I'm not going to check the firing order. Looks like it's been like that forever. I'm more worried about, you know, what happened up here. Was it parked because we boiled the head off it? Probably. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said you can't kill me. You could probably kill one if you cooked it. I don't. Jeez. They're barely on there. That one's pretty black. Bit of oil and shit on that one. What's next? It just re-gapped itself as it fell on the concrete. Electrode first. I'll forget that and put it back in and wonder why it won't fire. What's the hell? Why is that one so shitty? Hmm. Here, here. I'll get that air cleaner off and just make sure there's nothing down the carburetor. Like more wasps nests. Give him that. This chance at actually undoing, instead of snapping off. That thread is pretty bad. I would at least just... No, the earlier ones had like a, a handle there and you could just undo them, but nope. This is a later model one. It's nearly new. 79 new. That hinge has been replaced. That hole, check this out. That's, that's, some, that's some redneck repair, that is. So that hinge has obviously been replaced, but check that out. We've just welded a massive big washer on there. and You know what? It works. It's good enough for me. Bit like that tipper safety switch. Might not look great, but it would have worked. Imagine that driving along without safety switch, body starts lifting. Oh, 
Oh, it was a little stuck, but it's okay now. Once you sort of initially broke it free. There's nothing in the carburetor, so that's a good sign. So, I might disconnect that fuel system because if it does want to wind over, if it doesn't, I'll just have to replace some, some of these shitty leads. But if it does want to wind over, I just don't want any crap in the pump starting to travel this way. What's that? A breather. It's uh, wrecked. All right, so I'll disconnect the fuel line, disconnect the line from the pump as well. So why I say I want to disconnect the pump and also the carburetor is when we start winding on it, if that pump actually starts working, it's going to try and suck whatever garbage is in that fuel tank. Um, so I want to find out what's in it or how much is in it or if it's even still resembles fuel first before I start trying to pump it up this way. And this line will just disconnect up here somewhere. Um, just so if there is any crap in the pump, it's not sending it straight into that carburetor. And that's just clamped on, so I can just knock that fella off nice and easy. And I might run some compressed air back that way and just see what it sounds like. If you can hear it bubble and there's something in there. If it pressurises, sometimes you can actually get it to push a little bit of fuel out. So I'll undo him over here. That flash lube in the cab gives me a little bit of confidence that this motor is going to be alright. They obviously cared enough when we lost our leaded fuel and everything went unleaded. That's what you had to add just so you didn't burn valves. So, right, that's disconnected. I might actually put a hose and some fresh fuel on that pump and see if it'll blow it out there. You know, catch something on fire. Maybe that. And I like just using the old drink bottle. Have I got enough hose? No, I'm going to have to put it down here somewhere. Somewhere there. I like using the old drink bottle because you can see what's going on. You can see if it starts to suck a bit of fuel through. That crap there, next to this, kind of makes me nervous. I got, we've got no spark at the minute. The plugs are out, but I might move that anyway. And the bit of colour is just a little bit of two-stroke. She's been sitting for, what do we say, 2007. So what's that? 17 years? So she's probably going to appreciate a little bit of lube. There's always time for lube. Anyway, I'll get that out. I'm normally, not much of a glove wearer. That is pretty horrendous. You can see where that little pile is. So there's a washer bottle in there. Couldn't even see the bottle was in there. Oh, it's thick. It goes all the way back. Oh my god. goodness in. That's awesome. Really good, thanks. Thanks rats. Right, let's get on with it. Stop whinging. So two things we're going to be looking for is that one, the oil light to go off. That would be a good sign. We're going to listen for, I don't know, how fast it turns over. Um, and see if that drops. See if anything spurts out here. Because that'll tell me the pump's working. If the pump's working, I'll replace the filter and just run straight into the pump, straight into the carburetor. Surely that carburetor's fine. Didn't even kick. 
give one little eh, and that's it. I'd say we've just got a massive voltage drop with those stupid cables. Let's see if I can tighten this one up a bit first. Hmm. Always use the right tool for the job. It's a tightening hammer. Tighten shit and hammers shit. Right, I'll give it one more go. Failing that, I'm going to replace. Didn't think that was even connected there for a second, but if I get nothing, I'm just going to have to replace those leads because otherwise we're just going to kill time. She wound. Check out the fuel. Watch here, that's dropping every time it cycles over, so it's picking up fuel. Won't be long, it'll come out that filter. I can actually hear some of those spark leads cracking. I can actually hear the clicking. Come here. Listen close. Ooh. Okay, so now I can hear a cracking and a geyser of fuel just went that way. So we might give the spark somewhere to go. I'll just clean these plug holes out. Just a bit of contact cleaner and a rag. I'll give them a bit of a clean up. Although I think I have new plugs for a 202. I've had that many of them. But for now, I'll clean them up, clean the holes, plugs back in, leads on. Did the light go out? Okay, rethink. Reconnect that. Because I don't care if fuel goes into the carburetor. And let's just see if the oil light went out. Yep. Oh, and there, it was off, and then it flickered. Yep, all right. So like I said, clean the plug holes out, clean those plugs in, put them back in, give our spark somewhere to go. Um, then we might just throw some fuel at it. That all went relatively well. I actually, generally with these, you're in there mucking around with points and things like that especially if when they were sitting they were open they don't tend to close properly they'll seize up but just the fact you can hear spark arcing there somewhere is a good sign so let's get that done just so there's not oil and crap and dirt and and all sorts of junk stopping the plug earthing to the block right Sometimes that can be an issue. I might vacuum up my fire hazard later. No, maybe not. I've already got a fuel leak, but that's probably just because I've got no plan. No, that is just pouring out the diaphragm of the pump. Which doesn't shock me. Little rubber diaphragms don't sit very well. They, they dry, they get brittle, and they crack. But, I'm a bit cheeky with them. I've had that many 202s. I just had a realization. I was about to say, I've had that many 202s that I got cheeky, and every time I had a spare pump or spare carburetor, I'm sending it away to get rebuilt. That is a different carburetor. That's not a Stromberg, or if it is, it's a different Stromberg that I'm used to. But I've definitely got a pump. I, I know I've got a pump. Yeah, it's a Stromberg. It's just different to what I'm used to. Maybe because this one was 79. See, it's got that vent tube that runs over that charcoal canister, which is kind of an emissions thing. I don't really speak emissions. I like the other ones, the old ones with no shit, none of that crap. Anyway, you never know, it might be okay, it might not too. But anyway, has it got fuel in it now? It should have. Choke works. 
No. Absolutely nothing. Oh, yes. I've got something, a fuel leak. So I'd say it's pushing straight past the float. Stop talking, just put the plugs in. Do it properly, Michael. Yeah, do it properly. Have a look at it. Just have a look at it, will you? Do it properly. No, what I mean, I'll clean the plug off completely. So it looks new. Bosch plugs they are. Couldn't tell because they were covered. Should have known from the green lines, but couldn't tell because they were covered in shite. Oh, these aren't just Bosch. These are Bosch Super. And it might give the ends of the plug leads a little squish just to tighten them up a bit because they were really loose. That feels pissing out of that pump. Like, literally pissing out. Ah, oh, there's a rust hole there. Was it a badge hole? Nope, it's a rust hole. So her nest has been there long enough that she's put a little rust hole in the guard. That's okay, I've got a bad memory. I'll forget that pretty soon. Really soon. Oh, I did it again. Gotta do things properly. Heaven forbid if you didn't. I thought I was getting cheeky by having a pump and carburetor. Different carburetor. They, they all do vary a little because, say from the grey motors to the early reds to the later reds, the base is all different. This one's top is different as well, and that's why it sort of threw me for a second. But the width of the bolt, mounting bolts, is different. Real early greys are like quite narrow, then they get wider and wider the bigger they get, or the, the newer they get. And it was the bigger they got. They were 138s in a grey, out to the 202. Thought I was pretty clever. Oh, failed. That's coming apart. They're the old school ones with the little screw on head. She was falling apart on me. I didn't clean that plug. I've, I guess I've given up cleaning the plugs. Like the body of the plug. I'm almost going to go out on a limb and say cylinder number two is going to be our problem. He was a bit oily, that plug. You watch, I'll put the plugs in. That'll build the compression, and that'll heat our wires, and I'll end up having to put wires in it. Because those cables, those cables are really bad. Like, really bad. This corner smells bad. I might check the base of that other carburetor anyway. Because I don't care if it doesn't have an emissions pipe, I really don't. If the base is the same and the throttle hooks up the same, no it doesn't. It's because the other ones are um, a linkage. This is a later model with a cable. So I'll take that out like I said. Because that pump's clearly going to have to be replaced. I'll show you what I mean. If you see there, it's leaking fuel all around that. There's a little diaphragm in between the two halves of the pump and those screws screw down. I suppose I could probably try and nip them up and see if it'll hold fuel, but it's pissing out. Like, anyway, I, I've got a pump there. I might as well chuck it on, but for now, I'll give these a little squeeze, because if you see inside there, they look like they they were really loose. See, that doesn't even feel like it goes on. So I'll give them a squeeze, tighten them up. That way our spark can go somewhere and then we'll just try and add a bit of fuel. So if you just give him a little squeeze, and I might just slide the boot up a little. Yeah, that's better. That's 
heaps better actually. Slip that boot down. Probably still work. I just want to rule it out. Number three? Yep, number three. And the firing order is right. I'm just going around it in my head. The firing order's fine. Right, now we should have somewhere for our spark to go. So if I put a little bit of fuel in that carburetor, let's just see what happens. Famous last words, you can't kill a 202, I bet you can. That fuel that came out of that filter was pretty clean too. So there clearly wasn't much left in the in the pump. Let's just see what happens. Stop talking. Maybe you can't kill him. That just fired up instantly. And that fired up basically the minute I hit that key. So we've got fuel going everywhere and let's not forget we've got those water soles. I shut him down but Oh, I know where I saw it. Why that choke's on? I'll bet you this choke's on. All right, maybe I'll bet you it's not. Because I fiddled with that choke before. I fiddled with that choke before. That was probably the most lively I've ever had one come back. It didn't even wind over, it just sparked instantly, but I mean, why was it parked? That radiator is absolutely shit. But, I'm going to stick some water in it, idle it down, even if it's running out, it's better than nothing. Even if it's pissing out, it's, it's still going to have some circulating around there. And I don't know what's going on with that choke is stuck on. Well, the choke's not stuck on. You can see it's open. But it's idling really high, and if you force the throttle um, lever down, it idles down. It's not sitting on the throttle stop, so I might lube a bit of that up. See if we can't run him a bit longer. Jeez, it's chattery though. It was tapping its head off. Oh, I didn't listen to see if it was on all six. It sounded okay. That's just running out. Where's that coming from? The water pump. I'd say we overheated this one. The water pump's failed. Who there? You can just see it running out down the bottom and there my hand's going to get in the way. Now I've knocked my fuel over. Oh no, fuel's still standing, that's excellent. If you see just there, you can see the stream of water running down from the back of the pump. 
Maybe I can get you around the other side and see it. Yeah, there he is. So I'll go out on the limb and say the pump had failed. We've got water leaking everywhere. Fair dinkum. It's coming out of there. I've got oil leaking out down there. We've got a few things to do. I'm going to ignore all of that and give it, idle it down and give it another run. That bracket's moving every time I open that. It's just, it's not even on the idle screw, but it won't shut the throttle properly. That is pissing out. So it's got to be that cable. Righto, so mental note, before I drive it, the throttle is sticking, like the pedal itself is seized up. So that's all it was, so that should be right now. But just remember that before I drive it, remind me. Accelerator pedal sticking. Because that might not be that great, you know. Better hurry up before I run out of water because it is just pissing out of that pump. So I need a battery clamp, some hoses, and a pump. screw that I'm talking about. If you see this little fella here, the longer that goes, it sits on that lever and it'll actually push the throttle down and I'll level up. But that wasn't even touching and so it had to be that cable holding it open. I'm just going to screw that out a fraction and just make it idle up just a little and I'll just keep adding the water and just see if we can't get that. Listen to that. I don't see any oil off the top yet either. I'll just idle it up a little. If we get it hot, I'll drop the oil. Actually, it's dropping itself. Might save me some time. Check this out. That's fuel. But it is just pissing out. Just squirting out. I'll tighten them up and see what happens. Oh, that was loose as. Well, they've got the chance of slowing it down at least. Oh, slowing it down. I've got to get a narrower screwdriver, I can't get into that screw properly. So I've ordered him up a fraction, and that pump is just spewing water and crap out everywhere. There's still a little bit of water in there, but I'll top that up, but it sounds okay. Just a little hesitation there, but... For its first few minutes running in God knows how long, it actually sounds pretty good. I 
just have a thought. I bet you know why that carburetor was clean. A valve saver. It won't corrode. It would have. It would have basically had like an oily residue in there that wouldn't have corroded. Thank you, valve saver. that it's um its thermostat is open and yeah it's just pretty warm I bet you boy I just jumped when I heard a noise then so battery clamp I've got a pump on the shelf a water pump Maybe a radiator. Some fresh oil and filter because she's still chattery in that top end there. I'll tell you what I want to do. I actually don't think it's got enough transmission to it even engaged, but I'm going to pull it into gauge, into gear, into gauge? What are you talking about, idiot? Into gear! Well, this could be bad though. No brakes. No, absolutely nothing. No indicator either. I'm going to go with a limb and just say it doesn't have enough fluid, alright? Because it literally there was nothing on that there was literally nothing on that that dipstick um i won't panic about that just yet this is good so far so i'll do me a little list what i say hoses a pump probably a radiator and a cap a cap, a battery clamp, oil and filter, fuel filters I think I have, oh some terminals some terminals because I'm going to make new new leads an air filter so hoses pump radiator cap radiator um, battery clamp oil filter oil terminals and air filter all right let's stop talking we'll go and get some gear so I got hoses I even got myself a cheap universal aluminium radiator although it does look too narrow now that i've got it home but the fittings are in the correct spot and they're roughly the same size so i'll make that work one way or another um, i already had my pump that can go on but i couldn't get a water pump 
ordering it overnight. So it'll be in tomorrow. So I have to duck back tomorrow. But we've still got plenty to go on with. However, I'm not putting a brand new radiator in that engine bay. So right now I'm just going to press pause and pressure clean the shit out of that. Maybe clean up the oil underneath. And we'll just start pulling bits out. Get the new radiator in. Get the new hoses in. Ready for the new pump tomorrow. Get the new fuel pump on that easy oh transmission fluid i got that too because that was empty anyway let's stop talking let's let's get washing So I nearly didn't grab that cheap universal radio. I thought, oh, it might be all right. But watch here. I don't think it's going to be all right at all. Look at it flexing. It's that thin, it's ready to break, I think. Can't even get that. Look at that. Poor old girl. I would say the first time that got hot, that probably would have let go. But back in the day when these were worth basically nothing, that's probably all it took to park it. The cost of a repair of a rear main or a water pump was probably more than the car was worth. Rear main's a fairly big job, but it's still worth doing. Now, I'd say I've got a pan gasket leak as well or something. There's no transmission fluid at all. Never going to find any of those bolts in there. There's only three in it, so there's one missing on the other show you why these pumps leak when the bearing starts to go out they've got a little telltale weep hole underneath them I'd say that's what's leaking not the actual gasket itself but I'll just get these clamps off I've missed the bolt have I? No. and you can see there that's the hole there, the bearing's in there. So when the water starts getting past, you can almost see the bearing there actually. When the water starts getting past it, as the bearing fails, it weeps out there and you can see the water stain. That's what's been happening. Anyway, I'll get another one. We'll get that sorted. Inside the block's not that bad. Well, after all, I suppose it is pretty new, it's 79. I initially thought it was a 71. Actually, listen. You can hear how grumbly that is. Very unhappy. You give it a pop in a few hoses as well. well that's that one fixed. But a few of these vacuum lines are pretty perished as well. I might get some hose. The vacuum advance is pretty perished. Hmm. Alright. Keep moving. Keep washing. Okay, so that escalated very, very quickly. I've pressure cleaned everything inside and underneath the engine bay, but it's pretty evident that nothing was ever gonna rust from about there back. 
because the transmission was leaking so badly the mud and gunk and crap built up under here was just horrendous like look at that and I was all over it all the way back So what I've decided to do is while I've got the pressure cleaner out, I may as well start tearing these mats out because while I was under there getting a glimpse of the underside, I realized there's not a lot left. So we'll rip this out very tentatively and I'll see if we can't just strip everything down and just keep going for the afternoon, get as much as I can clean today and then when the water pump turns up then we'll start putting everything back in the engine bay all right i'll start getting all this crap out and like i say i'm not much of a glove wearer but this is some next level shit like it's really up there i'll just pull a bit of this out see if i can get to the, the seat bolts actually i might what i might do is pull some of the rubber matting out and just get in there pressure clean it let it drain through the rust then I can get to the bolts. That's what it looks like part of the battery clamp. Yeah, there's a fairly fairly substantial hole in this side floor. I um I think I'm adding floor pans to the list. And that's why. That sort of sound deadening seems like a good idea. And it probably is. Until your windscreen starts leaking and it holds the moisture and rots it out. The Valiant was the same. Where's the Valiant? Over there somewhere, I think. It's the same, it had really thick matting. Same thing. Look at that. When that starts getting wet, it just holds the moisture. <laughs> horrendous well, this one's already got a pan in it I could see rust from underneath but if you see let's get a tech screw up there another one over there it worked did the job I suppose I literally cannot even see the bolts to get this damn seat out Is it wrong to pray that the bolt head just snaps clean off so I don't have to deal with it? Just one twist. This outside one, it's supposed to be half inch but it's rusted away that bad that the head of it, it no longer has a size. Yeah, that's pretty rusted. I actually don't know what I'm going to do with that. So these rusted head bolts are finally broke the other one free just with vice grips they rotted that bad oh they rotted that bad but I actually got a 12 mil they're half inch but I actually got a 12 mil to fit and it was still too big on that size on that side there so just resorting to vice grips they just rotted there was 10 mil of dirt over the top of them so and a leaking windscreen and just years of sitting I suppose so I guess the rest of my day is cleaning I might get this one out I might have to heat this one I'm frightened to heat it because there's so much stuff still in here maybe I'll heat it from underneath Pretend that I didn't see more holes under there, up here. That insulation seems like a great idea when the cab doesn't leak. But it certainly has been the detriment of this thing. It's okay, I can buy floors.
that is one good thing about old Holdens. You can get reasonably uh, cheap floors. Oh, got him. Whereas the Valiant, on the other hand, they were three quarters of the national debt. Oh. Got you now. See if I can put a spanner on him now. Nope, it is just literally just too small. Just rotted to the point where it's too small. A little bit smaller spanner got him. Oh, guess what? That's hot. Because I heat it from underneath. Idiot. You think I'd get smarter? And I'm going to do it again. Just can't help myself. As bad as this shit is, this is, and this is one of the worst. I love this stuff. By the end of the day, this thing's gonna be stripped, cleaned out, and all this filth be nothing but a memory. I can feel my soul leaving my body while I'm doing it, but never mind. Sucking my will to live. Well, I'm just going to dig the bolt out first before you can even have a crack at it. Where's that toothbrush gone? It's like an archaeological dig trying to find a bolt. How am I going to get that? I had to get a bit creative then. Literally, the spanner on, vice grip on the end of the spanner. Don't forget to bag up all your bolts and label them. Because if you're anything like me, you'll forget where they're from. You'll be like, uh -huh. no, I won't. Yeah, you will. Yep. You sure will. I wonder what treasures are behind the seat. I think Cross has only one in the back. There's two in the front and one in the back on this bench because it doesn't fit forward. I find that astounding. It does not fit forward. You know that. Just assume they all would. Either it does and I just haven't found a lever, but it looks fixed to me. Ah, one to go, right out. Stop whinging, let's get it done. I can just imagine the engineers when they were making this one. One guy'd look at the other one and go, where do you want to put the back seat belts? I don't know. How about under the seat behind the handbrake? I think I just stripped the head off that. That didn't feel right. Stop talking. Concentrate. I think what we're going to try and do is take the scuff plate off and then try and undo the handbrake and move the handbrake because I just can't get at it. And I know I've said it before, but with old screws like this, rusty old screws, clean the head out with something like this, soak them down, maybe even give them a bit of a and then just wiggle them in and out. Just let all that rust and shit drop away. Because if you strip the head off them, you'll end up renaming yourself something probably really horrid. That's pretty good. You'll be very vicious towards yourself. I might not get this one, it's pretty rotted. I don't know, got him. There's not much head left on that one. And what goodness is under here? Oh, that's not too bad. Oh. It just cost me two bucks less. Just found two bucks. What year? 1998, I think. 98? 88? I can't see. What's that say? See, now I'm, now I'm sitting, that's a 50 as well. Two bucks 50 seeing stuff now. That might be just enough movement to get that, you know. Finally. 
Ugh. Got another nest of some description. I don't know, let's get this seat out. So what? Why is that joined to the seat? I'm shitting. I thought it was shitting me. Phillips head screwdriver. Little T bar tool. But wait, there's more. I don't even know what that is. And a big flathead. And lots of smelly old rags. Oh, and some tape. Some Tape. Still not worth it. Oh, that's it's probably what's holding the seat together. Feels like we've got tetanus. Can you catch tetanus? So I guess I've got some more cleaning to do. Another nest, heaps of other crap, but I'll sweep her out and then we'll start pressure cleaning. They were that brittle, they broke the minute they were trying to pull through the seats. So I'll have to get new seat buckles. Anyhow, it is what it is. And that caught on the back of the seat, like why would that be attached to the back of the seat? Fair dinkum. But it was. Nearly there. Come on, stop whinging. I should have a fair dent in the floor. Oh, another dollar. Won't be long it'll be paid for. I'll tell you what I won't find in here. My dignity. May as well keep going while I'm at it. Pull the trims, get inside the doors as well. While I get the pressure cleaner out, I may as well do it right. Well, I don't know about doing it right, but I may as well do it. Can you see that clip again? far away from rotting out this one. I've actually got one little hole there. I don't even know what that is. It's like cardboard. And it's just full of dirt. Anyway, I'll clean him out and pressure clean him up. Didn't that 
actually think I'd get this far today, to be honest. I thought we might have got it running. That sort of shocked me a little. But, if I can get it all stripped down, and I might take the bull bar off next. May as well, get in behind that, wash it. It's not staying, obviously. I suppose it wasn't that obvious, but it's not staying. As much as I like trying to save on everything, I think these trims might be past their use by date. Just saying. Just saying. Knock this bar off. So I get my head right here. What was here? A rat's nest. That's horrendous. So the last thing I think I'll just run just run the vacuum back through these doors. Mind you, that's all wet. So I don't, don't know how well it's gonna vacuum out, but I'll get it with the pressure cleaner. It is just just dirt. And she's full of holes. So she'll drain well. I might just undo that patch so that side drains. And these little fellas here, knock them out. Same as what I was saying before, just scratch out the heads, give them a bit of a tap, smother them in WD, I'll knock those drains out, and get back into the pressure cleaner. And as much as I whinge and bitch about hard bolts to get out and how disgusting inside was, you know I love it. It's the first big step to getting it back into becoming something worthwhile. So, it's a bit of fun. Sick and wrong, but fun nonetheless. Nope, that's not coming out. Got one, that'll do. Yep, that'll do. One's enough. Today, but one thing I did want to do first is just check that's the fuel line running back to the tank. Well, I just want to check it with compressed air and see if I can hear anything in the tank. And compressed air you could actually hear the tank expand because the lids on it it can't get away quick enough it have it's got a vent so it, it won't hold air but you could hear it expand you could hear the tin popping but no bubbling no nothing so there's absolutely nothing in that and to the point where if I give it a little bit of air you hear that that's the tank And you can actually hear the air coming out. There's nothing in that. And that 
valve saver that we found in the cab gives me a little bit of confidence that that tank's going to be fine because if the fuel evaporated it'll leave behind that that oily valve saver flash lube whatever it's called and maybe that's why the carburetor i um, wanted to sit there and idle maybe it's not gummed up with i don't know evaporated fuel and garbage but then again if there is anything in it the fresh fuel tonight will soften it and then probably block it tomorrow so we'll see if it runs again tomorrow anyhow that's it so that's probably it for today it's it's past beer time and i feel like i need to go and swim in a barrel disinfectant or something like that i've washed my hands to the point where they're skin's just about coming off from degreaser and that probably won't be the last pressure cleaning i'll do i think i'm gonna have to go around that two or three times the, the inside's done but underneath that transmission leak there's so much dirt has stuck to the to the transmission fluid that's leaking and absorbed it in it's just caked thick and i'll flip the tray up very loud birds like really loud and I will lift that tray up as I said it used to be a tipper um, and, and then get into that area as well pressure clean everything and then while it's drying I'll zip in and get that pump and we'll run a bit more fuel through it but like I say that's one thing that does worry me if there is a bit of junk in that carburetor is it softening right now getting ready to block it the minute that I fire it in the morning I guess we'll see it actually shocked me how how it did wake up but I guess I was winding it with the plugs out and the fuel system connected so it had plenty of fuel there ready to fire it was probably filling the cylinders to be honest but it fired up it seemed like I wanted to run I'm still a little concerned about did it overheat that pumps clearly leaking the hose was split the radio looks terrible and the cap was missing so everything indicates yeah it probably got hot I guess we'll find out I don't tend to name too many cars, but sometimes they just come to you. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. If you had a concrete mate, and that was his last name, he's Tomo. So this one's Tomo. And I'll tell you how this one tonner came about. It actually started from a conversation with my uncle 30 years ago, believe it or not. I was only a kid, didn't even have my full driver's license, and my first car was an EH Holden, a 1964 Holden with a red six cylinder in it. And when we started talking about it, my uncle said the concrete plant that he worked at has 202 engines that run the agitator barrels. Like this, I'll show you. So this is how the Holden 6 is sat. And that's obviously the cradle. It had a transmission on the back of it and that coupling must join up with a chain drive of some description. Although I sprocket off the back of that transmission somehow and a chain drive to the barrel. And so the manufacturer of the, the cradle and the barrel on the cement mixers just used whatever was available, whatever was cheap, and obviously red six cylinders at the time were cheap. So fast forward 30 years and one day I'm thinking, well I know where the concrete plant is, it's just down the road from where I grew up. And I kind of knew how to find the owner. And thank you Barry for letting me go and have a look around expecting to go out there and find a motor or two or something like that and this is what we come home with tomo so anyway tomorrow the pump we'll put some more fuel through it um top up that transmission find out where that transmission's leaking and see if we can't get to move under its own power i've got some tires coming tomorrow for some wheels that i've chosen for it and we'll just see where we get tomorrow not only have I given this one a name, he's already starting to grow on me. Just strikes me as the humble hard worker. He's done 305,000 kilometers and I guarantee you every one of them is hard. I only got to look around the body. She's a little bit knocked around, but anyway, I like him. All right, that'll do us. I'll see you in the morning for more pressure cleaning, a water pump. Let's see where it takes us. So this morning, while I'm waiting for a phone call to say my my water pump is in stock we're going to do the other pump we're going to do the fuel pump and i'm pretty confident that that line's going to be okay so we're just going to dump fuel in it but we'll connect him up first clean out this line new filter 
hopefully that's our fuel system and we can move on to our water system cooling actually I might undo that line before I undo the pump because it'll flop about everywhere do I need to undo the line? probably not no no if I just undo the filter I don't need to undo the line and then I'll just swap them onto the pump over on the bench, the new pump I'll go from there I can probably take my um, tape off the spark leads now too that ran relatively well yesterday I'm quietly confident I won't need to muck with spark why did I say that? you know what will happen now or a points or something I fail and I'll be mucking the spark all day. Got him. I'll get this gasket cleaned off. Oh it's gonna come off in one piece. Good eye. He does want to live. I'll just wire wheel that up, clean it right up and stick the pump on. I'll put all new clamps and little rubber hoses to I may as well do it right now while I've got it all apart. Now I'll re-tighten this fella. Now in theory, we're buttoned up, we can add fuel. So I stuffed the rag in the front of the motor there just to try and drop the water height just by soaking it into the rag, just to get it away from the face there. So I guess the next thing we're doing is we're cleaning up that face ready to seal the pumpkin. Let's do that. I'm going to put the slightest smear of silicon around the outside of this pump. What do we do with that gasket? Righto, where's the gasket? Oh, behind me. I'm going to use a tiny bit of silicon just to take out the imperfections in that face there. Got a little bit of corrosion around it, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to ignore it and just pretend it's perfect. Because it is. Tom oh, is quite perfect. Right, uh, it's probably radiator time. I'll fit the fan in after or have I got a better chance of putting the fan on I've got a better chance of putting the fan on and sliding the radiator down haven't I let's do that do I need to paint it probably not I don't know that might seem a bit why don't you just paint it well because I don't even know if this thing's gonna get hot has it had a blown head gasket has it got a blown head gasket I should say so I'm just going to wing it spend as little time as we can line that up first instead of talking you dipshit right now talk what was I talking about oh yeah could have blown head gasket could overheat could be a complete waste of time. I'm willing to take the chance, don't get me wrong, throw a few parts at it, but I'm not wasting time painting everything. Stuff like that. We'll let it earn its stripes first and then we'll put some stripes on it. I hope it's okay. Although an engine swap on Tom would be pretty cool. Knowing me, I'd only just put another six cylinder in it though. We've got other stuff. We've got mucus with a big block. We've got the old Cleveland XY. The H with a big block. Everything needs a big block. But not today. Today, we're going to see if we can make Tomo drive. We're going to wash him again, then see if we can make him drive. Righto. Radiator. Run it, oil. Righto, stop talking. Let's drill these holes in this radiator. And what I mean by drill holes in this radiator, I don't mean drill holes through it. It's got it's got some universal holes here, but they don't line up. It's um one size fits all. I just got the dimensions right, roughly. 
and the fitting sizes and I'm just going to use the old radiator as a template 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 and see the dyslexia came out pretty hard then just see how close we can get just let me check those fittings I'll line those fittings up oh they're pretty close none of the holes line up though so I might have to drill all new holes so these ones I can almost line up but if you see along here the radio is not square so I think I'm better off trying to square up this side but then again it's only a cheap one it's probably not square and these guys have missed by a mile yeah and the gap at the back there is a bit wild too so anyway I'll just wing it I'll make the holes a little bit bigger it'll be fine just like that I'm going to paint the top tank flat black because Tomo is a workhorse not a show paint too bright for Tomo That is borderline of the worst masking I've ever done. Almost feel obligated to do the radio support now. If the motor does have to come out, I'll paint that up really nice. We did that in one of the other HQs and it actually came up really good when we had the motor out. Bit of flat black, paint the motor red, come up real nice like episode 12 or 13, something like that. We'll just make sure this one's gonna run before we get too carried away. I already feel too carried away. That looks choice. If your choice is shitty. One more coat for good luck, huh? Made no difference at all. Oh, who'd have thought it? Some paint peeled off when I unmasked it. Wouldn't have thought that had happened. Gave that about six milliseconds to dry. I better get me bolts actually. Where are my bolts? And that radiator didn't work out too bad because that fan is actually a little bit closer now than even the factory one was. I probably should clean that up. That one's good obviously because it's brand new, but that one's filthy. Let me give that a scuff with some sandpaper. I do like a tiny bit of Permatex. Especially on old fittings that you think are going to be shit house. And I can guarantee you that water neck is shit house. Oh, I don't scratch me. Flash new paint. Bottom one, and we're in business. And I did buy terminals. But I think for now I'm just going to clean them up because it did run, it did start. So I'm going to clean them up and just just see how big a voltage drop it does actually have. Because if it's enough to run it for now, then we've got bigger fish to fry. We've still got to start cleaning down the back. I've still got to figure out if that rear main's leaking. Is it going to get hot? Does the transmission work? So we've got better things to do. Don't worry about these terminals just yet. I'll replace them later, I promise. Sure. Righto, so some fuel in the tank, some water in that tank, and we should be right to at least run it for a little longer. Then maybe add some transmission fluid. But I, I really should pressure clean it again. So if I add transmission fluid and it's leaking, I can actually see where it's leaking from. I do want to run it though.
Anyway, I want to run it in case there is a lot of gum and varnish and crap just sitting in that carburetor and it's softening as we speak. Getting ruined, getting ready to block my existence. So I'll get a bit of fuel in it, give it a run and then we'll worry about all the other crap. So I've put fuel in it, so far there's nothing on the ground, so that's a good sign. No leaks from the tank, but I'm not confident enough to put coolant in it just yet. Just going to fill it with water. I guess we'll see if overnight's been good to me or bad to me. Has it picked up? I think that accelerator pump's working. I can definitely, I can't see fuel, but I can smell it. Give it a go. Just give it a go. Same as yesterday. It's dead set, can't kill what it's in. It's a very rattly though. I'll get some fuel for him. I'll come closer so you can hear me. I'll get some fuel for him, just get him warm enough to drop that oil with a filter on it. That might cure our little rattly packet there. I guess then we'll start having a look at adding some transmission fluid, see if we can't pull a gear. I spoke too soon about I didn't see anything leaking out, that's fuel. That's a little fuel line just there. And now I've got 10 litres of fuel wanting to run down my armpit whilst I try and replace that. Anyhow, a bit of muck up under there. Ah, that's oil too. That, that rear main's clearly leaking. I thought that fuel about in one second, but for now, I'll get it hot enough so I can shut it down and do that oil, and then I'll worry about that leak. That oil's going to change itself if it keeps leaking like that. couple of minutes and then we'll be shutting down for that oil as long as I don't run out of fuel. She's not quite happy. You hear the exhaust note, she's got a little flutter to it. better than she has in the last 17 years anyway. Before I go revving it, let's change that oil. Got a couple of little issues. A bit of oil, a bit of fuel. And there's another little piece of hose like that just here. 
but I'm not going to clamp it because it looks worse than this one, but it's not leaking. So let's see how much fuel I can get in my armpit by trying just to whip it off, lock it, new piece on. I need a razor blade, clearly. I'm going to need a razor blade. We'll get one of them first. What if I could clamp it there and get that bit off first, maybe. Maybe bust it and it'll just leak twice as bad. Yep, I'd say that's what's going to happen. Oh, geez, that is solid as a rock. I can't even clamp it. New thought process. I'm just going to drain the fuel. Just going to let it run out. Where's me? Where's me? Container. Here we go. Absolutely flawless. Not. It's terrible. Fumbled around like a, I don't know what. All that fuel drains. Let's see what comes out of here. Didn't look too bad on the stick, but I mean you can't tell. Bottom of the pumps, a uh, bottom of the sumps probably full of thicker, blacker swill. And this will be as hot as anything, no doubt. Actually, that's barely warm. That motor felt pretty warm. That that's barely warm. Anyway, it's coming out. I knocked that filter off. Just thank God it's right above it, so I can catch both at once. And then we'll go back to fil fixing that um, fuel line. We'll just fix one leak at a time, or one thing at a time. It'll come round. We'll have another go. I'll put my fuel back in. It doesn't look overly dirty or anything either, so I think... I got off pretty light on the fuel system, and this one had a bad run there with fuel tanks for a long time. The XL Falcon Ute, the HQ Wagon, Commodore. Anyway. That rear main's a bit of a worry. I want to see how to change the rear main. That'll probably be next episode. Although, I might just give the sump bolts just the tiniest little nip up, just in case. Maybe it's not a main. Maybe it's just the sump gasket. Hey, when I say about just nipping up that pan, I'm talking an eighth of a turn and if it goes that really gently maybe go a quarter of a turn no more though especially if it's a cork gasket because if you go trying to you know tighten it down you're just going to pop the gasket out with the cork so i'll just squeeze out and it'll tear the gasket in half then you'll have a sump leak as well as a main leak anyway i just want to check that sometimes it's the back sump gasket that somebody's done exactly that with or something similar before I go panicking about a main, not going to matter. We'll have to get him up on the hoist at one stage anyway. See what's going on. Now we'll let her warm right up, see if she can get get some oil right up to the top. You know the rockers. Oh, no, the sump gasket. I'm doing that first. I'll just give it a nip. It's a bit difficult to see, I know, but straight up around the edge of that sump, I think they're three eighths and the back ones are either half inch or seven sixteenths. Um, yeah, that's what they look. The front ones look like that. But there's two bigger, that's my point. Two big ones. So I'm going to start with them and just work forward if I can actually get to them. Put it on the hoist, you idiot. I don't have any wheels. Can't roll it. Can't get it to the hoist. Don't seem so stupid now, do I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I am, because I didn't get wheels. They should be here, this Arvo. Oh, jeez.
we'll see. I'll clean all this up because that went in easy a quarter turn. So I'm going to get that other side there. And then probably do three or four down each side just to spread the load a little. And just to expand on that a little, I guess, is I'm certain these 202s, I haven't had the pan off a 202 in a long time, but I'm certain they're a four piece gasket. They got two side strips to the gasket and then two sections that sit into the pan that, that obviously mate up under the block. And if that rubber in those little horseshoe sections shrinks, I guess that gives the ability just to nip it up. And I did only just nip it because if you go to really tight in a mirror, they're going to dent the pan, squash your gasket or whichever. But it just went an eighth of a turn so easy with a tiny little ratchet to a no force. So I went a full quarter turn, so we'll see. I probably said all that for nothing because it'll piss out more oil now. But anyway, let's let's see. Oil's in, feels right. Yeah, it's not too bad. That was a bit optimistic, wasn't it? Didn't even pump it. Come on. Give me three pumps. So we encountered our first carburetor issue. I'd say the float has stuck open and that's flooded because that's not even trying to kick. I knew it was coming. Yep, that's got plenty of fuel, so she's flooded. I'll hold her flat and give her one more go, but I think that battery sounds like it was leaving me as well. Flooded. Everything was going so well. Okay, what's that telling me? What's that backfire telling me? When it's backfiring like that, it's generally now a stuck valve or timing. But why was it going so well before and now wants to stick valves on me? So I've knocked all the plugs out, dried them off, put them back in, tried to fire it, didn't fire, but they're all wet again. Like it's like it's not firing, but it's got compression. Oh well, it's got spark and it's got fuel. Have we now got sticking valves? There's that little bit of heat from running it now sticking a couple of valves. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wind it over for a while with no with no plugs in it. And 
there's no fuel coming out so it's not drowned with fuel as I first thought. Are we now sticking valves? Is that what we're playing at? Is that the road we're going to go down Tomo? A little bit of surface rust, a little bit of heat. Especially when they start to heat up and expand if there wasn't a lot of oil getting to the top end because of that shitty oil and the fresh oil maybe hasn't got there yet. It, it, like I think it has now, I just wound that over. But if we can't get anything out of it this time, I'd say the rocket cover's got to come off because it's the only other thing it could be. I've got a ton of fuel, but it's not burning it. I've got spark, so it should be burning it. Have we now lost our compression? That would make sense because a couple of times over there I was turning it over and you hear that clunk like I wanted to not lock up but like I found a hard bit. If it's not opening the, an exhaust valve to get rid of the gas, that's what it, it would do and that backfire. You wouldn't think it would run fine and then start sticking valves. Generally it starts sticking valves from the minute you, the minute you try and hit her. Good on you, Tomo. Not going to hit it with any fuel, nothing. Because it was starting perfectly. So, if we get anything other than firing, I'm going to knock that cover off and we're going to start bashing on some valves. thought that was a thing. Let's get it off. So there's one thing that's given me a tiny bit of confidence and there is a fair bit of oil in most of those rockers, not all of them, most of them. One here is pretty dry and those three at the back are pretty dry. But what I'll do is I'll get WD in under that spring. I'll aim it at the valve guide or the valve stem seal and we're just going to go along and we're just going to tap each rock and see if we can just depress the spring and see if any of them are, are stuck at all any of them loose well there's no clearance and they will feel pretty good they feel pretty consistent as you're twisting on them there's obviously ones that are depressed but if you have one stuck down, you'd actually feel lash in the rocker. So I'll spray hell out of them and then start tapping. They sound a different. Can't get at that. Give it a wind and see what it does. Probably nothing different. a really good sign it means the lifters are rotating on the cam mode some are a little slow that one's a little bit slow but that might come around with a bit of heat but i can't believe that went from running as good as it did to just starting to stick valves just from a little bit of heat maybe there's a lot to be said with leaving it running a little bit longer i should have maybe maybe let it get hot get that oil right up around it you see the oil's coming up the most of them 
Nothing no, no, here yet. Those two are a bit lean on. That one's got it splashing everywhere. I might put a little bit of oil in the top one. Oh, actually, what I'll do, while it's running, I'm going to spray those valve springs with WD again. And I'm not trying to get the spring, I'm trying to get the, the valve stem seal and some down the guide. So you've got to try and get right up underneath it. Actually, the stem seals look really bad. Like, really bad. Sort of issue I expected to have yesterday. I think she just needs a good run now. A couple of those push rods are slowing down. If it's that idle for too long, give it a rev and they're going again. So I think it just needs to cover back on and let's get it driving. So just whack the cover back on just so I can contain the oil and run it a bit longer. And I fired it up and went, that is running worse than what it was when we originally fired it up. Then got to about here and went, oh, maybe that's why. That would be why it's one cylinder down. Anyway, that's no big issue. I'll get some plugs, chuck them in, but for now... I'm going to finish the washing down that I started yesterday. So I'm going to spend the last couple of hours of today getting pressure cleaned. rock has slowed me down a little bit today but you get that I actually expected that yesterday not today you always get bell sticking always so they've been sitting around for a long time to the point where one of our others the XE back in about episode I don't know 16 or so it ran for about three weeks perfectly then started sticking valves to the point where it bent push rods That was a really weird one. Why can't you get the plug on, Michael? Because it's still in there. Get it out. Idiot. transmission to it. If it just runs straight out, I'll know it's a transmission leak. There's a fair bit. I don't know if there's any point pushing me foot on the, no, nah, there's no point in putting foot on the brake, but what's that like? That's not park brake, must be charged. Whoa! So that's, that must be neutral. I 
SUVs. That was, oh, oh, what are we doing? It's still turning. Stop. That was oil pressure. I think that one was charged. So I don't think she's charging. Anyway, that's a good sign. We've got a transmission that wants to change gears. Tomorrow we'll get, actually, better sit down and get a list. We'll get this all tidied up so we can get that down, get some wheels on. And I did feel like we went a little bit sideways today with those stuck valves. Only once before with the XE, like I was saying, have I seen a car start, run fine, and then stick them after it got hot. But anyway, I kind of expected it yesterday, so I guess I've lost no time. But it would have been nice to get on the ground or wash down transmission running we got fluid in it it's working so i might actually write myself a list for tomorrow so i can try and pick up some time i'll get some cardboard the first thing i want to do is pressure clean under that tray again and you think how could you have more pressure cleaning to do well under that transmission like i said was caked with that much crap the more i blasted it out of there it's gone everywhere it's all over the windows all over it, the engine bay is covered in again so i've more or less got to go back now and give it all the rinse off and you do sort of see more the next time around you i'll do under the tray drop it down and then we might get into the brakes while that's drying and then i want to black the tray because the brakes are non-existent i just push that pedal and straight to the floor so pressure clean tray brakes black under tray at least that way I can chuck some wheels on. Oh, my rear tyres are here tomorrow. I've got the front tyres and all the rims. My rear tyres are coming tomorrow. And so if we can get that blacked tray down, we can pretty much put it on the ground and put some tyres on it and actually roll the damn thing around. So, wheels. Oh, I scotch brighted. I scotch brighted a section here. Just see it's a little bit brighter yellow. I might do that too. So we might scotch the outside. That headboard, I suppose we've got to do something with that. Headboard. And then I guess just start to see what works. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. Pressure clean, black under tray, some brakes. The wheels will be here, scotch bright the outside and fix the headboard. That should be enough. All right. It was a good day. I shouldn't whinge about it. It was a really good day. But I'll see you in the morning. So last thing yesterday, I had a bit of a rethink before I shut the doors and that was on the re-pressure cleaning. I chucked crap everywhere with the pressure cleaning yesterday and thought oh, I'll just give it another rinse down today but I grabbed the hose before I locked the shed up and just hosed down the back chassis area just so I can keep moving a little quicker so all the dust and whatever that I've been blowing around the place is pretty much washed off the chassis. So I'm going to just get a, a subframe black and do all of the top section so that the tray can come down. Once the tray's down, I can put wheels on. And if you've been here before, you know, eventually I'll get him on the hoist so I can get up underneath. But if the top section's blacked, at least we can keep moving. So we'll stop talking and we'll get that done. As I say, good enough for me. Um, my tyres did turn up. Uh, they're over getting fitted now. But first I think we've got to address something with these brakes. Yesterday when I pushed that pedal, it went straight to the floor and stayed there. And now the front calipers are locked on. Now that's either the piston in the master sticking, which is locking the calipers, or it's the piston in the master sticking and the calipers are also locked. So I guess we'll find out. I'll see if I can free up that master cylinder first to release the pressure off the master and then we'll just have to deal with the calipers then we'll fit wheels all right let's get into that so to try and free this master up i'm just going to try and heat this 
I was going to try and heat the, the aluminium itself and just see if I can release that piston. Without burning it, of course. If you get the aluminium just to expand a little, it might let go of that piston and just let it slide back there. I'll fix our pedal, but we'll see what goes with the calipers. And then just with a, a rubber mallet of some description. I'll give him one from the side as well. Give him a good jolt. Oh, the pedal's up. Oh, she's freed up. So, we'll see if the... So I'll see if the calipers are still locked. I'm just going to try and pry them, but I'll tell you one good idea. Which one's the one I wanted on? Is chuck a couple of nuts on. Because if you happen to pry on that and squash that bit of thread there, You'll hate yourself, you'll hate your tools, you'll hate the shed, you'll hate the car. There'll just be a lot of hatred flying around. Maybe a little more. Just to protect that thread. Oh, no way. Oh, no way, they're locked on solid. I'll try the other side. I'll leave him there, actually. Oh, no way in hell. So is that master still jammed? It can't be. Pedals come up. Anyway, maybe now just the pistons are jammed. So we'll, we'll do the same to this. I'll heat the back. I'll turn the wheel so I can get you in there. We'll heat the back and try and free up that piston. So here's the back of the caliper and obviously that's where the piston is. The line's bringing the fluid into here and the piston will sit in there. So I'm just going to heat the back of this caliper and then maybe just give them a tap on the sides and, and see what comes. Failing that, um, we will pop it into gear, put some wheels on it, pop it into gear and maybe just try and break them free by seeing if it'll drive forward. But anyway, for now, I'll just heat them up, see what I can do. I can see the top of the, the pad there. I'm gonna get something in there and just give that a tap in so it really forces the piston that way. The old sacrificial screwdriver I found behind the seat might come in handy. This is not in the service manual anywhere. The same. Maybe it should be in the service manual. Just saying. So I had one once before, I think it was the Commodore. And it was doing something similar. And it was that flexible line. It was actually blocked. Um, but I'll unstick the other one using the same service manual approved technique. And then we'll whack some wheels on it and see if we can't lock them up again and take the wheels back off and do it all over again. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, there we go. Alright, I might actually jump on the pedal. I'm going to do it again before we put wheels on. Just do it once. Oh, there's some shit going on there, but 
One minute was hard, the next minute went to the floor. We'll see. Take a punt and say that they're completely locked up again. Yep. Yep. Completely locked. Yeah, that one locked as well. Why does that shock me? If all else fails, like I said, we'll just start tracing back. Crack it at the master. See if we get fluid there. See if it retracts. Then crack it at each line. And we'll eventually isolate where the lockup is. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with a limb and say it's in the caliper. Right, so here's how I'm going to go about it. Obviously master cylinder in your lines. That's a proportioning valve or a splitter valve or whatever you want to call it. But the fluid's essentially going to come out that line to the right hand side and that line to the left hand side. So I'm going to get whichever one of these wants to come undone e easiest and make sure we've got fluid coming out um, there and the same on this side. I'm going to knock that one apart and see if we've got fluid coming out there. reason I'm going to try it before the rubber lines is the rubber lines are usually painful. So if I can check we've got fluid there, the whole system is right from the master down to there and then we'll worry about these lines because that's what I've had fail before. So, a little bit of heat without trying to melt everything around it. Might actually do that one. So, a little bit of heat on that guy. See if I can crack him and hold that valve. Um, and just see if we get fluid. Trying very hard not to melt my brake switch. Oh, stripped it. And I've got to tell you, that's super common. Old brake lines just stripping. So, I've got it there now. And that's, that brake fluid is literally just, just running out. So that's pretty much telling me. I'll give it a squeeze. I'll just make sure. Put something on it. We get a bit on that, I'll know it's coming out. It's coming out anyway. So now we'll go further down the line to the caliper. Actually, I might crack that one first. Hmm. Well, that one was easy. Mind you, I did give that one a little longer for the heat to really, oh, that's just pissing out. So that's not the issue. I did give that one a little longer, as I was saying, for the heat to soak in. It is just running out, so we've got no issue to there, so let's crack them at the calipers. So I just cracked the caliper nipple, and that came off way too easy. And I'll see if I can get some fluid out of there. Absolutely nothing, although there is a weep there, but I just pushed that as hard as I could and nothing come out. So I'd say our, our rubber lines are completely blocked. End of that. So I've disconnected the brake line there. I've just got the, the brake fluid dribbling into a bottle. On the off chance I might be able to keep some of it if it's not full of rust. And we'll get that line off. And that line runs down here to the back of the caliper, just there. So I'm going to knock the caliper off via that bolt and that bolt down there. Have I got my finger on the right one? Nope, that one there. Undo that one, undo that one, take the whole caliper off. And that way if I've got the hose off and the caliper off, if the hose isn't blocked, I can compress the piston in, try and free up that piston. 
So it isn't my rubber lines because that's essentially MIG welding wire and it just threaded through without any issue at all. So we got a block caliper. Well, we got a seized piston in the caliper. So how I'm trying to free up that piston is essentially the same way you're trying to remove a piston to rebuild one and that is small amount of compressed air and they always have a stopper so it, it doesn't go pissing off that way so just something in there is a bit of a stopper and you see the piston comes out and then I'm getting a, a socket and a C clamp or F clamp or whatever you want to call it and I'm just going to wind that in and when you can wind that in nice and easy by hand at the minute I'm winding it in like this. But when you can get it to the point where you can just go, oh, that's, that's actually not far off it. I can almost wind that in properly by hand. But I'll keep going a couple of times like that, back it off, compressed air, pop it out, wind it back in, maybe even try and get a little WD down around that seal there. Might do that. Just to get on this side of the piston. It's got the fluid lubricating on the other side. And if you remember, I heated the caliper before, so it's still pretty warm. It's not too bad, but it's cool enough to touch, but it's still warm. Same again, hammer in there. Can you see that edge of that piston? I'll, I'll keep the piston low. I'll keep the hammer low so you can see. And there it comes, sitting right out. And this isn't how to rebuild a caliper. This is how to get it running this afternoon so I can drive it around the yard. But if you were trying to rebuild that and you wanted to get it out, obviously just stick a brake pad in there and pop the piston right out. And then you can get to that seal and the other seal. But I don't want to pop this out. I don't have a rebuild kit. Like I said, this is the how to drive it this afternoon way to free up a caliper. I can't even free up the bloody clamp. Still a little bit tight there. So I'll just keep working away at that. In, out, in, out. We'll get it there. So right now we should be ready to bleed brakes, but check this out. Push the pedal down. And up. And down again. And up. So we've got a cracked line there and a fractured line there. It actually feels like it's been rubbing on something. But anyway, I'll replace this line and we'll, we'll start again. And I must say that is pretty common. And that one is so much worse than all the others hence why it broke. No, but that little bit of movement, me pulling it out, putting it back in. But I'll get him out. We'll make a line. I think we went through making a line in, I think it was the Mucus HQ video. I don't know what episode that was. About 26 or something like that. The big block HQ that I call Mucus. We put a new 9 inch in him, and so we had to make brake lines across the back. This one, I don't think you'll learn much from this one, because it's about 8 inches long. We're getting close. I can feel it. Now, I'm going to go real precise with my brake line, so much so... Nope, not precise. I'm just going to do that. When we did Mucus's brake lines, like properly, I um, I used wire, and you you bend the wire first, so then you can get everything I don't know roughly in the right position, and you just follow it with the 
with the brake on. But I reckon I won't be far off if I just. Oop, yes, I will. That was way too far. I'll just give him a check. Just looking at it, it's actually probably going to be a little bit more difficult than I first envisaged. It is quite tight around that steering arm. And yes, I'm going to reuse these if I can get that line out. And after all, they're already perfectly, you know, by script. So I'm going to give you the abbreviated form of how to do a brake line. Because if you want to see it in more depth, go back to Mucus, um, episode 25, I think. That's the thumbnail. That car's there is the thumbnail. So I'm pretty sure it's episode 25. We're doing a bit more depth, but sham for the end on the on the brake line. Just get a grinder and get it spinning, and just twist it. Put a little chamfer on it, and I recommend trying to use one of these. I'm not going to because I'm in a hurry. But if you, you're doing multiple lines, do use one of them. But I'm going to use this little fella. It's another little flaring tool, and it's got that. Those two little dies. There's the first flare. There's the second flare. Screws in there. So you position your line in with your fitting on. Oh, hang on. I've still got to cut that shorter, don't I? Wait. Yep, nearly messed it up. It's getting late in the Arvo. I'm starting to rush. I really want to get the wheels on this and get this to run around the yard today. Just for those little kickers, you know, you have a couple of hard days on it. You just want that little light at the end of the tunnel. Brake lines. I don't know light at the end of the tunnel. And I mean, brake lines can seem fairly daunting because they're like, oh, safety, you know, imminent death if they're not right. And they're not hard to make. They honestly are not hard to make. They're very hard to make look good. And you can definitely tell a, a pro job versa slapped up in 15 seconds, just bend it like that type of a job. But anyway, moving on. I'll put that fitting in there. You position him in there. Yeah, I guess that's the big difference. You can tell a pro job. So neat. Perfect bends. Nope. Good enough for me. Good enough for Tomo. And that'll give you your first flare. Mm. And if I've done if I've done it even remotely close to okay, this will give me my second flare. Double flare. See how I get, see how I went. That's just like a little sandwich plate. Looks good enough to me. And with brake lines and stuff like that, screw them in finger tight first. Make sure they're going in. If you cross thread them, you've heard me say it before, you'll call yourself horrendous, unspeakable things. And there's just enough movement in that that I can actually fiddle around with it while I'm going in with that that um, thread to make sure I don't do exactly that. Cross thread the arse out of it. So everything back together and I've bled up the front brakes only at this point just with one of those little one person bleeders bottles that you know transfer the air without letting the air back in and I have zero confidence so I haven't bothered with the back wheel cylinders just yet. I just want to get some wheels on it and get it around the yard once. Give myself a little bit of a pep up for the afternoon. And the brake line didn't come up too bad. It's not perfect in that bend there, but you know, it'll do the job. All right, wheels on. So the wheels and tires I've chose for this one is a really old school style of wheel. It's obviously a cheap reproduction, but a 2156515 on a 7 inch rim up front and a 2456015 on an 8 inch rim down the back. 
Yeah, I tried to turn them over by hand and they were very, very tight. But let's see now that the wheels are on and maybe we'll get some gears and start to move. And she's starting really good, but that light there, which I think is charge light, is not coming on. And my indicator for my gear shifter is way over here. Actually, we've got no fuel gauge either because I've got 10 litres in that. But that felt like we've got reverse. We're going backwards. That's obviously neutral. Good enough for me. Moving, we stopping. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Not going too bad. Should have washed this windscreen. That's for certain. I dare say it's going to stay cool because it's got a brand new radiator and pump and all the rest of it. But I'm just waiting for the next thing. Hey, the speedo's come alive. It's working too. See if I can whip around. She's still pretty heavy in the steering. She's the Povo pack, remember? Nope, not gonna make that. So we'll go this side of that tree. No matter if I hit the headboard, it's kind of already stuffed. Gonna be bush dashing. Back on track. But how good are these mirrors? They're like they're reversing mirrors, they're like getting the job done type of mirrors. Oh, that one's sort of facing at the door, but... Fuel gauge isn't working, odometer's working. That's like the first car in forever that's had an working odometer. We can see the road, which isn't great. I can see the road through there as well. smoking a bit but I'm going to ignore that pipe there and just say it's the oil from the rocket cover because it's probably I know 50% true she's sounding good though probably put a little bit more water in it now she's bled down anyway good first drive I noticed some that might seem like a total sickness that I enjoy every second of that. I shouldn't say that because tomorrow you'll probably gloriously kick my ass with something I didn't even predict. But as far as the first drive goes, not that bad. The brakes are working, well, the brakes are actually working really well. Probably because there's so much surface rust on those discs, the minute you touch them they're grabbing pretty hard. Uh, motor's running okay, transmission's shifting gears. A little bit annoyed about the indicator it's not indicating so and I've never pulled one of them apart to get to get the indicator to indicate the correct gear I've never had that before so I guess we'll figure that one out as we go and tomorrow we'll have to get into that headboard that's flapping around and bouncing about maybe a bumper bar I know at this point the video is probably getting pretty long but hang in there I'll try to make it worth it We've got plenty more to go on Tomo yet. See them on. So this morning I think we're going to have to start doing something with this. It's not just broken off. 
fair. Yeah. It's also bent. See, it's leaning back. So I'm going to have to pull this forward first to straighten it up and then try to put it back in position somehow. But yeah, I'll flick him around so I can get maybe a golf cart out this side and pull it or the bobcat or something, but I'll flick him around. We'll see if he starts. Oh, well, I just found out that key's not the same. Oh, there's nothing like it. Oh, that's right, we've got a choke. Could always use a choke, couldn't I? Oh my god, and charging too. He's getting better by the day. Ooh. He's loving it. So, if you're going to get redneck on it, you've got to get fully red. Not pale pink or anything, just what could possibly go wrong? Well, lots, I would imagine, but anyway, we'll have a go at that. I'm going to brace that with a couple of blocks and just try and pull that forward. See what happens. Nothing good, no doubt. So, safety first, I've actually got the other half to drive instead of me doing it myself. Just so I can check when, you know, it's had enough. Hello. I'll just chuck that one over the, over the top there so I can't hop that way and jump off my block and go through that back window. Safety first, like I said, or second, or third, or something. I think now I'm just going to have to drill these or, or grind these rivets off and then maybe make a bracket that comes up the back, drill it through there and just hold it in place. Something completely sketchy will do. Yeah, I'll, I'll start grinding these rivets off. So here's what we've come up with. I got a piece of flat bar and I put down the back there and I use some excessively large bolts that are brand new because let's face it, I need it to look mint. And don't worry about that hole in the wrong spot. That was already there. Yeah, sure. But that should do the job. It's relatively square to the other side. That's good enough for me. So. I'll probably have to put a bracket down here because it's still 
it still wants to rattle a little bit when you wiggle it. Um, I will screw these back together. Actually, that might be the rattle, is it? I don't know. But I'll run some new screws into them in a minute. However, it's starting to rain. So I'm going to use the rain to my advantage. I'm going to start sanding on this. I'm just going to use an 800 or maybe a 600 just to sand up a bit of brightness in this. If you remember earlier, we scotch brighted a patch here and you can see that's a lot brighter yellow than the rest. So it was going to get wet anyway. I may as well start sanding on it, bring out a bit more bright color. Because underneath this primer, there's actually more yellow. So I think if I give this bonnet a good sand rather than scotch bright, I'll actually get down to the base yellow in spots. And then we'll worry about what we're going to do with him afterwards. I'll have to do some body work. Well, that's done. And maybe just hammer that back, back up um, in the corner of that. But anyway, I'll get sanding while it's raining. sand on it just to try and bring out a bit of yellow and just brighten it up a bit and the paint was sort of flaking off a bit so hit it with the fresh cleaner got more paint off and then ended up just scraping it off with a razor blade scraping the top coat of yellow off to get back to the primer and then you give the primer a sand and the original yellow was coming out so i got me a front bar but it's perfect for tomo it's absolutely crap but I'll give it a bit of a clean and see if I can't at least get some shine out of it. Looks like it's been at the bottom of a dam for a while or something. I'm not 100% sure what's all over this bar, but it doesn't look good. I'll let this crap soak in for a while and see if I can't get some of it off. It said it looks like it's been under water or something. Look at this. Look, what is that crap? It's like mold or some crap. Tarnish maybe? I don't know. How about you just stop whinging and get it off? How about that? That'd be a good thing, wouldn't it? Too many words, Michael. Stop talking. come a long way in only a few short days so let's just drive it
Asshole. Piece off. Oh, come on. All right, where's that black? Where is that black? Come on. Come on. Oh, fair dinkum. Gotta be shitting me. I swear to God. Just doing my head in. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck me, dude. Right. So that won't be the last you see of Tomo. We've got a lot more to do on him yet. I've got some floor pans on order, and that's probably the next time you'll see him. Till then, I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.